Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Today we are going to talk about my Traxxas Sledge. We are going to talk about the updates and the upgrades that I've done, as well as guys talked about some of the issues that I've had. Now, I am not going to dwell on all the negative things about the Sledge. I don't want you guys to think of this video as something like a sports, uh, you know, type rival where you've got, you know, um, I let's say I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan and I'm making fun of the Leafs. I don't want you to think of Traxxas as the Leafs. This is me documenting how this truck has gone, the changes I've made. And again, guys, the updates, upgrades that I've now made got the truck to the point that it sits now where I hope I am done with having to update and upgrade and fix every little thing on it. So here we go. When I first got the truck, I immediately changed out the ESC and motor. Traxxas motors are fine. I cannot stand their ESCs. I don't like the way they feel. I don't like just the way the acceleration feels. I don't like the way the punch, the brake, everything. I've never liked them. Anybody that has used an aftermarket ESC, whether it be a hobby wing or a castle, you know what I'm talking about. On my Traxxas Max, my V1 Max, I had the Bluetooth module. I messed around with the app. I tried all the settings I possibly could, and I could just never get it to feel right. I knew that with the sledge, that was going to be the same issue. So immediately, guys, I swapped in this system, which obviously, guys, Mama Monster X8S and a sensor 2200 kV is awesome. Now, first few runs went well. I eventually broke a rear arm. That was a bad landing. That was completely my fault. Nothing to do with the, anything, you know, negative about the sledge at all. It was a horrible landing. And if anything, I had watched some pretty crazy landings uh, before that, that I had done myself, just bad landings. And the truck actually always took it. The plastic always took it. So if anything, breaking that one arm gave me an excuse to buy the orange arms. So I've got the orange arms on the truck as well as guys a complete extra set so when i break one i can just immediately replace it with an orange arm and just order another one now that worked for a couple more runs and then that's when guys all the problems started so what we have over here is the stock spur so first the stock spur went completely destroyed fine i upgraded to the gpm gpm was fine during that time i broke a front cvd Okay, I replaced that. Then I destroyed the pinion. Now, what happens here is because Traxxas metal is garbage, as soon as you upgrade to something like a good hardened uh, company steel, so whether it be hot racing, whether it be GPM, obviously that hardened steel with the powdered metal that is Traxxas will cause the pinion to eventually go or vice versa, depending on what you had to change. So I replaced the pinion with i can't remember guys right now on here if it's like a robinson racing or an armor pinion or something like that i did that so i had the pinion and the spur that was all good but on the last outing i destroyed the ring gear so this is from the rear diff you can i don't know if i can bring you guys in if you'll see that but yeah you can you can see like the the teeth are starting to chip on the edges and stuff like that which and i'll probably throw a little picture up on the screen i eventually replaced those diffs, those uh, ring and pinion gears with the Traxxas machine steel gears. That is now done. So I have Traxxas machined ring and pinions. I've got, I did change the oil as well. So I've got 40 thou now in the rear and I've got 50 thou in the front. Now, since doing the ring and pinions, I have also upgraded the motor mount. So I now have the KCRC motor mount and diff housing so the diff housing is completely different and the motor mount guys is completely different also i like this motor mount because the way it basically holds the motor is it's two clamps and they clamp down kind of in the center of the motor so your motor is very very supported and this guys this back mount it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see right now i don't know if i can get you guys a better angle uh yes you can right there so as you can see there's a hole right there that hole when I first got this motor mount, these were act this one here was actually mounted back here. And I didn't really like that because of the fact that it was very, very close to these wires and the contacts and stuff like that. And I remember thinking like, oh, I don't know if I really like this. I'm going to have to shift the motor a bit, get it closer to the bell cranks. And then I noticed the hole. I was able to just kind of move this one over and we were good to go. Now, saying that, something else I had to do on the motor itself, guys, was... Or sorry, on the motor mount itself was these clamps actually came reversed in the beginning they were sitting up this way 
And just due to, again, guys, trying to get this pinion to uh, mesh up properly with the spur, I had to reverse these. This size mount is, I can't think of the size right now offhand, 41 point something, I think it is, uh, is designed for the longer can. I think it's a longer can, uh, 1650, I can't remember. So it's a torquier motor, so you would have a different pinion. Uh, obviously, you'd be going bigger, but because I'm sticking with the 2200 kV, I'm still running, I think it's just a 13 tooth pinion. So they, Kevin himself, uh, KCRC, did say that his motor mounts are, you know, he built them to allow for bigger motors and all that kind of fun stuff. So me still running something like a 2200 kV, um, again, not a big deal, guys. I just had to reverse the mounts and I can slide this out a little bit if I wanted to go to, let's say, a 14 or a 15 tooth pinion, or if I wanted to move into something a little bit smaller, like a 12 or 11, I could do that also. So that, guys, now is all good to go. I have also upgraded to the blue seal bearings if you haven't noticed yet all my hardware is now stainless steel also the reason i did that i'm not usually a huge stainless steel person but because i plan on driving this truck in the winter i thought hey instead of having you know rusted screws and all that kind of stuff it's better just to do it and since i was doing so much with the truck i thought why not just change all the screws now i had guys this whole truck apart so everything has pretty much been torn down Obviously, replacing all the screws is one thing, but then getting into the diffs, I just chose to pretty much unbolt everything and take it all apart. And I will say this, guys, on a very positive note, in typical Traxxas fashion, the truck comes apart very easily. It's very nice to work on. Uh, there's a lot of screws on the back. This rear shock tower is a very, very important part on the sledge. Um, just a lot ties into it besides from the shocks and all that kind of fun stuff. There's everything that goes through it. So I definitely guys recommend picking up something like a Basher Queen carbon fiber shock tower because I have had very, very good luck guys with those towers. I've had zero issues. The last crash where I did break the wing mount. So I had to replace, uh, this whole assembly. If I can get you guys underneath here, this whole part right here is all one piece. So I had to replace this whole piece. And again, the, the carbon fiber shock tower from the Basher Queen was fine. It was not bent. It was not broken. Uh, it was good to go. So that is it. I have, I'm, I think the only other thing guys I want to do before I get out and run it next is maybe just something with my battery tray, just so I can stop uh, using that one smaller 6S pack and go into one of the big bashing series that I have uh, just for runtime and just for overall pure power type thing. Um, but that is guys where I'm at. This truck now has in my opinion guys is almost like a version 2.0 those machined ring and pinion gears should be stock on a truck because for those to fail either would have been not properly shimmed and they're not shimmed at all or if i was running ridiculous power if i had a monster motor in there or something like that then yeah i can understand when the drive line itself may start to fail but I'm only running, guys, a 2200 kV. If anything, it's got less torque than what a 2050 kV would have. So I don't really have... I can't really find a reason for those gears to fail. I did a little bit of research on the Traxxas machine ring and pinion gears. And from what I can see, nobody shimmed them. I put everything in there. Everything felt very, very good. So I have chosen to do what everybody else did and not shim them at all. If I come across something different... I will maybe then at that point crack them open. But uh, everything, guys, I've read, I was on Facebook. I tried to search through YouTube. Anybody that's running those machined ring and pinion gears have not shimmed them. So again, I chose not to. That is it. This is a quick update video. Well, 10 minute quick update video on my Traxxas sledge. Again, guys, I cannot stress what I'm about to say enough. I am not looking to just bash and put down the Traxxas sledge. I bought almost everything you guys see here with my own money so i have a lot of money into this truck i want to see it perform i do not want to see it fail i'm not trying to like i said earlier on guys this isn't like a sports type rivalry or anything like that it's not a arma corelli versus traxxas type rivalry it's just me documenting guys what has happened with my sledge i am a hobbyist this is a hobbyist channel Believe it or not, it is not a review channel. Even though I've been fortunate enough to work with companies like Arma and Corelli, uh, Genzace, Habao, Basher Queen, KCRC, just to name a few. Um, 
they know what they're getting with this channel. I am not a reviewer. I am a hobbyist that just goes out and runs my trucks and documents how it goes. And unfortunately, the Traxxas Sledge compared to trucks like, let's say, the Arma Creighton EXB or the Corelli Kronos XTR, the 2022 version. Um, hey, you know what? Those trucks, pff, they've, you know, they've broken a couple little parts during really, really bad landings. Unfortunately, the, the sledge has failed me, in my opinion, guys. When I bring in pinion gear go, um, that's a fail. The CVD, guys, I have never broke a CVD before. I have bent some dog bones and stuff like that. I've bent a lot on my 8S Creighton. But for the rest of my trucks, guys, I have never broke those. So here I am now again. I've I've fixed this truck again. This thing now has no excuses to fail. In my opinion, guys, it's in complete beast mode. My chassis uh, is still straight. I don't know if you guys can see that or tell, but it is still straight. I have not needed an aftermarket chassis on this truck. This one has been working great. The Their uh, tower to tower brace seems to be doing its job. There's a lot of bracing back here that goes into the chassis. And it's nice, guys, because it's kind of a composite plastic, which means if at some point this thing was to flex just a little bit, this these things here should give a little bit obviously the tower tower brace is going to kind of stop a lot of that but this here would provide i would think a little bit of kind of flexing kind of support but i don't know for sure guys i'm just trying to judge because all i know again is that my chassis is fine on this truck there's no bends there's nothing like that so guys uh that was 12 minutes i think it went on actually longer than i thought it was going to stay tuned i hope to get out as soon as the weather gets good we're under rain and thunder showers for like the next four days but as soon as it is nice guys i will be taking this truck out i will be giving it a run i probably won't be launching it like i was this weekend with the crate dxb and the mojave exp i will just be out driving it yes i'm going to take it off a ramp a few times but i more so guys just want to get this thing out and see if everything is good to go again i did have this truck guys completely torn apart I may have missed something. I'm not perfect. So I don't want to do anything crazy, even though um, <laughs> I've spent guys quite a bit of time, even after I got it back together, going over it, it should be good. But guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not the usual running video and all that kind of fun stuff, or you didn't actually see me do any wrenching or anything like that. I just really wanted to get this done. I wanted to work on it myself. Um, on a completely side note, ta-da, I had to get myself a new drill. Uh, that Dremel that is in every video that I use, that Dremel uh, drill, died. The battery finally went on it, so I picked up, guys, this thing here. I actually had thought of doing a video on it, um, but it was, I don't know, just not all that exciting because it's a video on a drill. But I did just pick this up, guys. Uh, it's got a clutch. As you can see, it's not too, too big. It is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than that Dremel drill I had, but it also comes with two batteries. Uh, and the best part, guys, though, again, is that it has this clutch. If I haven't already mentioned that... Um, I have used this thing now to tear apart the sledge, rebuild the sledge, tear apart my fire team, rebuild my fire team. Uh, definitely worth it. It was a little bit expensive, but from in my opinion, guys, it was totally worth it. it I use this thing almost on a daily basis. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and enjoy your day.